Um, hello. Hi, everyone. First of all, I'm a pleasure to be here. I'm excited. It's my first time speaking in Portugal. Um, yeah, that's true. I live in Portugal right now, but it's my first time speaking here. I've been speaking all around the world, but the first time in Oporto. And the first time in Portugal as well. Okay, I just want to explain because I almost lost this talk. Because a few hours ago, I was in Leroy Merlin buying some stuff for construction because I just bought a house here, I just moved here to Oporto, and I'm pleasured with the city. Um, well, the yesterday rain wasn't so good, but anyway, I will introduce myself. I'm Romolo, I'm TC39, ECMA402 delegate, GDE, and I teach on my spare time um, in Barcelona Tech School. Well, I moved to Oporto, maybe I, I, want, I have to update this really soon. Um, and I'm also working in a company called Egalian. We do web stuff. We do browsers, client-side web technologies, we work on standards, we are going to speak about TC39, but we also work on Unicode, W3C, on whatever standard you might imagine. Yep, compilers, graphics, etc. I'm following the slides. Um, well, I will tell you a little bit about myself, because I was born in Brazil, but I grew, grew up here in Portugal, in Trás dos Montes. And I'm proud to be my first conference having an Agua das Pedras. This is great, this is great. And I moved to Spain 10 years ago, and 20 days ago, 21, and a few hours to be more precise, I'm back. I'm back to the town. So let's make some connections, let's do some events, and let's talk about tech. Cool. Well, thank you, Marcelo, <laughs> because also with the Programa Regressar, sorry for those that are not from here, but those of you who are, you know, I'm here and I'm back. Thanks, Marcelo. And one of the main reasons I'm here is the little one that um, it's off of my heart. Yeah? Cool. Now let's have the talk. We are going to talk about standards, body of standards, or standards body. Um, and we are talking about TC39. Who do you use JavaScript on your daily work? Who is JavaScript? I don't, but um, do you? Okay. Um, before we get started, also, I want to thank you, Daniel, uh, on the previous talk to a little bit about the story of the web. That was great. And I'm now talking about the boring part of the web, the JavaScript part. Well, what is TC39? Normally, when I give this talk, I choose um, a typical dish. Here in Oporto is Francesinha, maybe, or... Tripas a moda do Porto, but I will pick Francesinha because I think this one of the most international. Well, if you have to do a dish called like Francesinha and you want to standardize that dish, uh, you don't talk to Romulo because I'm not a good cooker, but you will talk with someone that is recognized to be a good chef and can at least give their vote of confidence to that recipe. So, someone that could provide a recipe of a good francesinha might be José Aviles here in Portugal or others in another country. And for standards, it's the same thing. We have to choose a venue to standardize. You might have heard about what WG, W3C, ISO. ISO is everywhere. When you, I'm now going a lot of time to Leroy Merlin to build ISO wherever because all the construction and almost standards everywhere use ISO. We have ECMA, we have Unicode, and lots of them. So if we have to standardize a Francesinha recipe, we could, we could use ECMA, but maybe it will be not so cheap to do it, because you have to, I will explain a little bit later. Anyway, uh, a standards body is just a place that holds that recipe and make it standard and make everybody follow the, the recipe doesn't make, everybody should follow that recipe. It's like Francesinha without beef, with the chicken or a vegan. It's not the real one. Okay, I understand that everybody, but this is kind of uh, um, something that is standardized. Well, let's talk about TC39. TC39 is just the technical committee. T, technical, C, committee. Well, easy. 39, why 39? I don't know. 
but they have they need to have a number because uh, TC39 is a committee that uh, defines the JavaScript language. And I heard that people do JavaScript. How many people do JavaScript again? I just want to, to see our raised hands. Well, some people think that um, TC39 or JavaScript folks that, or folks that define the language are the Avengers or Space Guardians. Look at me, I'm not like that, yeah? Um, well, no, they aren't. So who are they? Well, we have three kinds of people that normally compose the TC39. First, delegates. Delegates that are um, people from normally implementer side, companies that has browsers. How many browsers do you know? There are a lot, but Apple, Google, Mozilla, Microsoft, um, yes, they have a browser, yeah. Um, and other big companies that also use browsers behind scenes, like in PlayStation, you might have a browser there and you don't know, because we only play uh, all the games and not <laughs> pass many time on menu, PayPal, PayPal is not anymore, I don't know, this year is still. And other companies, students and, and non-profit um, foundations also can be delegates and invite experts, people that contribute uh, to standards by helping the community, by raising issues, by promoting new standards, and contributors, editors, reviewers, and part of community. Those are the group of people that um, belong to TC39. And I will do just a quick glossary to kind of explain the main terminology or jargon for today's talk. Well, ECMA. If you understood, we talk about recipes and people that, and a venue that hold those recipes. ECMA is that venue. ECMA 262, well, we don't do JavaScript, we do ECMA for 262. So this is the name of the language that makes us, um, the, the specification that produced the language we call ECMAScript, that is vulgarly called JavaScript, and TCXX is not nothing. It's just to replace the number because each group has a number. Imagine Dart has a number, other standard has a number, because on ECMA is not just JavaScript. You can standardize Francesinha, and maybe if we are standardizing Francesinha, the technical committee of Francesinha will be TC99, and will be composed by experts, uh, chefs, people that eat Francesinha, like me, because you have to to, to, you, you do need some stakeholders. So those numbers are based on the committee and the numbers of ECMA 262 also would be, will be based on the specification you are writing. So we are ready to advance. If you notice, I'm advancing in steps. I started with zero, I introduced, introduced myself with one, and now I have two. I will call it stages, but for now, forget about that. Well, how they work or how decisions are made. Consensus-based decisions, like everyone does. In our houses, uh, with your brothers, with your wife, with your partners, you do consensus. Everybody should agree with something before we do it. That's what happens normally, yeah? Imagine if you have a big house and you are 40 or 50 or 60 people inside that house and you all should agree with that thing. Well, it's a quite complicated, but it's part of the job. And all the um, no's or oppositions should be objections and concerns based on satisfying or based on a counterpoint and opinion. This means, let me explain, is not just say, oh, nah, I don't like it, I don't care about it. No, you have to um, give a reason, you have to explain really well why you are not agreeing with uh, Francesinha with, um, without beer in the, in the sauce, yeah? So, um, we have stages. I call one plus four stages because we start on the zero, like the arrays. And um, those are the steps that the proposal goes through before landing on the browsers. Chrome, Safari, Edge, 
uh, Firefox, etc. And when those folks work, because, well, it's beautiful, they are from X, Z company, but they also work yeah, to build this amazing language that everybody uses. And they normally work on several meetings per month. I show here some part of our calendar. We have uh, between four to eight meetings all over the globe. Some of them are online, some of them are offline. So this means that most of delegates travel a lot. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, and we have lots of calls during the month to kind of coordinate, to work on different things. And some of them are internal and some of them are external. Means that you are all invited and I will share links after all, we have calls for toolings, educators, for frameworks. Frameworks, I think we don't have any more because React is, is gaining all the universe. So I think that, no, I, I do some jokes sometimes and this wasn't a good one. <laughs> well, um, where we work, yeah, at our houses, but we work also on this GitHub repository, ECMA TC39, where you can find meeting notes, agendas, all the proposals that lands on the browser, lands on the language, and are part of our daily lives. And uh, also, every year is a release, kind of a recipe book for implementers to use to implement the functionalities on their browsers. Means this is kind of a cooking book where Google, Apple, or others, Egalia, etc pick that book, looks at it, and implement things on the browser. Well, it's, it's really easy to implement things because if the, cook is well, the book is well written, they shouldn't have any difficulties to implement those things on the language. Again, now, moving stage, the step-by-step -step I mentioned on my original idea was first, one plus four stages. We start by the straw person stage, that is stage zero. We just had an idea. What, what's your, our idea? A Francesinha function, as an example, that every time you call that function, it returns a Francesinha. Let, let's imagine like that, yeah? Well, at this phase, you just need an idea. You have to kind of share this idea with some people from TC39, like me, like that guy. Right there, Uzval is my colleague of work and one of the editors of that recipe that you see every year. He's one of persons responsible for also part of the, the, that thing. So you need to have an explainer idea, a mental uh, th th kind of thing to, oh, let's do this to the language. Because sometimes it's not... Uh, Sometimes we don't invent nothing. Sometimes we just steal from other languages as well. The, the natural evolution of the language normally is stealing from other languages that worked well. But sometimes we invent, I don't invent something, yeah? And if you have an idea, just reach out to us or go to the diff different uh, communication I will share at the end to bring this idea to the language. And we have a lot of stage zero proposals. You can see on the site, those proposals at stage zero sometimes are proposals that were presented and they didn't move to stage one, or just ideas that someone had and just dropped the, the idea there. And, oh, let's build a function Francesinha. Oh, well, that's a great idea. Let's put a stage zero. And now, stage one. What is stage one? It's the things getting started more serious. Um, stage one is you already have idea, you already have kind of a shape of the solution. Um, it's not just your dream, it's something that I think that could be a, a reality. So when you go plenary, you have a proposal on stage zero, just idea, and you, oh, everyone agree with this proposal moving to stage one? And if everybody says, yes, let's move stage one means that you will dedicate some time to that proposal. They expect you to have maybe demos, a polyfill. This is, depends on each proposal because some proposals you cannot polyfill, but anyway. And you expect major changes because it's just the beginning of 
the journey to make that functionality a standard on the browser. So, stage one, that's cool. Let's see some proposals at stage one. We have a huge list of proposals in stage one, and uh, today we are going to talk about some interesting ones. First one, decimal. Anyone heard about decimal? Oh, yeah, more than one people, and it's not just my colleague of work. So, well, uh, decimal is one of the proposals that I'm really excited. I'm bringing here this proposal because it's un totally undefined, because we didn't choose where to go yet. So we are in the middle of two different things. And um, as we are developers and people think that we are rich people or we are earn a lot of money, but decimal will allow you to calculate decimal values more precisely. Well, this code represents a hypothetical decimal implementation use, using big decimal with uh, arbitrary precision, but we also have different options and is where we are. We don't know if you go big decimal or decimal 128 that would be maybe more performance because it's limited precision. Uh, when you implement on the browsers, you don't have to worry about arbitrary precision that could be um, very, um, could eat lots of uh, resources of your machine because imagine you are calculating pi. Yeah, <laughs> can be, you can be there all life. Uh, but one of the motivations of these proposals as well is the compatibility with other systems because as most of people using JavaScript, you have to interact with different systems, Python, backends, etc., that supports huge, huge, huge decimal numbers. So having a big decimal makes JavaScript more close to other systems and the interoperability between them will be increased. So I think it's a good motivation. But we don't know where to go. So if you have use cases for decimal, just go to the proposal um, repository, raise um, a issue, and let us know your use case. If it's financial, if it's cryptocurrency, whatever. We need to know because it's important for us to understand and the language is yours. So don't let people that normally don't use language on a daily basis decide for, for you, yeah? You should decide as well. Other proposal that I really like and I would love to see on JavaScript and I'm really excited, but I also know that will take some time. But we are talking about stage one. Stage one is something that is more than our imagination, but also has certain bits to become a reality in future. So pattern matching, it's just a replacement for our switch statements that sometimes are really difficult because you cannot use expressions, you just use that string and it's so boring. No, uh, it's not boring, but he's, this is, would be a switch on steroids, expressions. Um, there, there is a lot of possibilities using combinators here. Imagine, when, go, dear, and you can have two arrays. One array depends on a string, the other array depends on the condition and you can decide on that. Or the other one, take a string on the first leg, the take, and you have a, a, a rejects. Imagine have this richness on the language. This, is, this could be possible if it moves stages. But we are just imagining having a matcher that can do customer matchers and you can type check your, your code like some, someone does. Yeah? means that you don't have to, to, to worry about the typing because you can uh, infer here, you can, you, you can do uh, pattern matching for it. And this is nothing new, it's kind of still from other languages. Imagine which one, yeah? Type annotations. Um, this is also a big one. Who heard about type annotations proposal? Type annotations proposal, and yeah, I'm one of the champions of the proposal as well. Type annotations proposal don't want to bring Java, uh, TypeScript to the browser. He want to bring comment types, and he want to bring annotated types that 
are erased at, round, uh, at the runtime. So browser doesn't understand the, the, the types and they are just comments. And this is the current workflow from, how many of you work with the TypeScript? Man, almost the same people that works with JavaScript, yeah? <laughs> This is incredible. Well, um, we want just to avoid you have to compile the code in certain cases. You can just copy and paste that code to the console directly and wow, without having to clean the types, don't have to do all these things that I know that you do because sometimes it's just for that function you are creating, you, you say, oh, I don't have to rebuild my project that takes wherever time to that. I know that um, there are a lot of uh, tooling that makes it faster, but this proposal, what brings this, what this proposal brings is when you have a type checker plugged in into your development, this will be an error. Why? Because 100 is not a string. And when you run this code, he will live like regular JavaScript, like all our lives. So it's optional. You don't have to use it. You, we, don't, we are not breaking the web. We are just in giving you an opportunity to fail less, to do better code, and to use the best of current tooling you know that exists on the market. So we are here to improve ergonomics on the type checking and promote direct execution of the code. No runtime effects. And also, we don't want to be 100% compatible with TypeScript, Flow, or EggleJS, or um, any, any others. We just want to developers to enjoy, and we are trying to make as much compatible possible, because all the user, user base you have also need this compatibility and this stability, but is not 100% sure that this will happen like it is, but we have to live with that, yeah? Stage two, let's, I have to go fast because otherwise I cannot finish stage. Stage two, well, we already have an idea, we know about semantics, we um, start writing the spec because someday someone needs to implement this on the browser and you have to start writing the formal spec, you already have the semantics, the API already covered, and um, normally on TC39, when you are stage two, we normally expect that thing will happen. But I will give you the <laughs> opposite example because one of the, oh, this is how a spec text, text um, look like. It's just the instructions in how to write the code. So you don't have to know a, little, a lot to write this. No, I'm, I'm joking. No, but you have to follow just the instructions to write the code on the browser. This case is a number format, uh, format range that now is stage four, available in the majority of the browsers, but this is a portion of the spec that was included, um, I'm not sure if by me or by usual, <laughs> uh, recently. So, records and tuples, or record and tuple, is one of the proposals I was more excited about, and this is an example of stage two proposal that normally goes through, and this one is kind of stale. And records and tuples, just bringing you these awesome functionalities of record and tuple to the JavaScript, the simple equality, nested equality, and order independent. This means that you can also um, make all these operations against objects, arrays, um, and promote immut immutable programming without um, having to worry about um, a lot. But this might not happen because also the implementation cost of this raised lots of concerns. So people are kind of revisiting this proposal, trying to understand how they could reach the different stages, or even being a new proposal to get to the ends of developers. But lots of people were excited about this, yeah? And myself included. But maybe it won't happen. Stage three, I have five minutes. Stage three, well, we already have complete, uh, completed the spec text, means the recipe, uh, recipe is complete. Um, we start having reviewers to start looking if the recipe follows the, the principles, the, 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 the needs you, you have. 
um, browsers start implementing it. And when browsers start implementing it is when problems began. Because start, oh, this doesn't work. Oh, this is very hard to implement. Oh, no, this will consume a lot of memory. And with that feedback, you kind of changing things slightly because you are in, already in a level of serious uh, thing that um, you don't have to change a lot of things. But of course, this <laughs> happens in some proposals. And you should start writing test 262. That is a kind of, um, this is a, a report picture, but the, a test 262 is a test to the spec. You write that recipe, 100 grams of ham, 100, uh, 200 grams of beef, 300 grams of um, tomato, and you write the tests to check if browsers are following the recipe. And every day or every X time, those tests run over the, all the engines and test if the functionalities are covered on that engine. So you can understand more or less if the functionality is well uh, implemented on the browsers because at the end, having one recipe and with different chefs, the final result is always different or slightly different. In this case, we want to be the same because people, when you run your application in Safari or in Chrome, you want to the final result to be the same. But sometimes this doesn't happen. Well, sometimes no, lots of times. And because of test 262, we improved a little bit um, this. Well, now stage three proposal. I will present Intel duration format. That's a proposal that you can already use on Safari. We have one champion there of the proposal. Raise your hands, <laughs> Urval. And this proposal, it's uh, in part of Intel API and allows you to um, just calculate durations. This is really good because I think the most great part of this is internationalized automatically. So we, we normally use libraries like um, Moment Data FNS that loads lots of um, lots of resources to internationalize your your dates and times. And with duration, you can calculate duration, but even internationalize it and in different formats. So I think it's one of the greatest proposals in stage three already available on Safari. I'm not sure if it's already released or a technical preview. Technical preview? Okay, it's technical preview, but soon, soon will be on the major browsers. Temporal. Again, another proposal from some of my friends of my, from Igalia, Urval is, uh, is there as well, Philip and others in Temporal. It's the, it's the, um, I don't have words to, to, because dates in JavaScript were broken for a long time. And we were using libraries to fulfill that gap. <coughs> Calculate the date, um, time zones. Ooh, who loves time zones? Oh, I hate time zones. Temporal helps you a lot and fulfill all the gap we had with those libraries and internationalize it. So you have at your hands one of the best and biggest proposals introduced in the language recently. You have the capability of doing calculations, um, lots of things related with time zones as well, on your hands with the JavaScript. And now stage four, because I have to advance fast, 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 fast. Stage four proposal is when you already have this kind of implemented in one or two browsers, um, spec it's okay, everybody's happy, um, and is ready to ship, you ask for stage four. And if people give stage four, it's done. You will be part of the next year edition of ECMAScript and likely to be on the browser, browser soon as possible. Like number format v3 that uh, went to, I put the asterisk because he's a champion, but we worked a lot on this proposal. Um, and this proposal went stage four and allows you to do a lot of, it's an incremental uh, update on number format that gives you format range, lots of new functionalities to number format. 
Landed in browser, it's part of the specification, is already merged and available in the majority of the browsers. Change array by copy, it's also a great um, and nice proposal that change, uh, gives you methods to change array by copying and returning that copy to you and not uh, uh, changing the original one. This was also a big part of the record tuple proposal, but uh, well, it, it went separated and also a nice thing to promote immutability. And lots of other proposals that you can see if you visit the, the ECMAScript site, uh, the, the ECMA site. And if you want to use those functionalities earlier, you can use ESNext, TypeScript, Babel, or wait just for next edition of ECMAScript and things lands on the browser. Stage four, collaboration, get involved. I will share the slides at the end, um, but I want to thank you a lot for being here and to supporting this talk. Uh, slides are here, just a few questions, and thank you a lot. Thank you, thank you so much, Homo. Again, we're running a little bit short of time. We still have time for some questions. Oh, we still have time for some questions. Can cool. I please join you? If, the if I know that we had some more time, I would <laughs> speak a little bit more. Yeah? So this first question is from Rodrigo. So, how has the rise of front-end frameworks and libraries like React impacted the development and evolution of ECMAScript? Well, um, on TC39, aside from people on daily life, maybe not be JavaScript or front-end developers, they care a lot about uh, the language. And React also imposed lots of standards. Records and tuples would be a nice addition, an example for React, because it would help on DOM diffing as an example because uh, having um, the, the, the immutable structure would help on, on these kind of things. Um, but yeah, we are always um, put some attention on, on the framework side. Look at Decorator's proposal. It was something that we start using it with Angular. Now it's almost part of the language. So we care a lot, uh, and we also had one of the calls I, 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 we promote that was based on frameworks, so frameworks we are all together to kind of talk about the news, new things and try to bring to the language what they are building by their own. I'm not sure if I answered that. Well, thank you for this one. So next question is from Daniel Rodriguez. In the Francesinha, the sauce is the most important ingredient. What is the most important ingredient for the evolution of ECMAScript? Well, um, that question is really hard because uh, it's half technical and half social because w when you live in, in, in an environment like um, TC39 where lots of different companies with different interests are running a language, it's natural that they want to fulfill the needs for their products. So the um, kind of human social part is really hard, it's harder than the language part itself, because from the language part and technical side, you can steal from other languages and implement in the, in the browser. But um, for the other side, you don't have solution. You you have to iterate, and 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 it's kind of a political game sometimes. I, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say these kind of things, but it's completely allowed. <laughs> okay. So next question. Um, it's also from Alex. So how limited are you regarding deprecation? We still have features from a language coded in 10 days almost 30 years ago. Yes, and they work. Yeah? They still work. That, that's the goal. Well, the goal is not break the web. And lots of functionalities that we have on the language or built in, in the language, they work pretty well. And the new features that are added, it's because we think or people think that would be needed. Example I'm giving the pattern matching. We use switch for since the beginning of the language, and um, we create Facebook, we create Google, we create lots of different applications with with using switch statements. And now we are planning to maybe have pattern matching that will be kind of a switch statement in steroids. So uh, we are trying to improve to give better tools to developers. At the same time, always thinking about not kind of. Um, making the language worse than it is uh, right now. So is why we kind of carefully craft 
the, the, the language to be the best for the people that are using them every day. Okay. So one of the last questions is from Gus. What was your proudest proposal to this day? Sorry? What was your proudest proposal to this day? Well, I don't, I, I'm championing type annotations as well with other colleagues. And I think this is the proposal that I'm most proud of because I think it's one of the proposals that will change how we see the language. I think this is one game changer for the language um, and will make uh, a language even more rich and richer than it is. I think that is one of the most impactful proposals we have on the language since, um, I'm not, uh, pff, I think is one of the thing ECMA ES6. I think is 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 I think is the most impactful thing. If goes further, it will be type annotations. Okay. And now last question from João. How are TC39 contributors decided? Big companies, namely. How do you guys decide uh, who's going to be contributing to TC39? Well, um, I didn't mention, but uh, you have to pay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he didn't mention. Yeah. Well, normally to be a member company, you have to pay a membership um, fee to, to be part of TC39 and, and to have a vote. But uh, as I explained, also you can, as an individual, you can also contribute or be invited to contribute um, as a, a, a TC, uh, invited expert because you are someone that made lots of things on, on, the, on this kind of spectrum of work and people and people notice you and invite you to participate and to help bring and, and improve the language. And do you have any advices for, for companies or individuals who want to be contributors? Well, the previous slide I had lots of advices. <laughs> well, we, I have some sharing some links of the, to, uh, the calls we promote for people um, to join. Educators call I think is one of the, the calls we, we do almost uh, monthly and that call we kind of present proposals, we bring champions to talk with the people, regular people that do JavaScript and to explain to champions uh, they are, you are doing this wrong or I would love to, to, to have this functionality or uh, these semantics are, or the syntax of this functionality is not so good or this is really complicated to, to a regular or average uh, beginner. So this feedback is important and we are having those tools call, uh, that, that um, educate us calls and er almost everything that we are doing is open. So you can go GitHub and search for proposals and see what's going on and, and, and just raise an issue and um, people for sure will try to answer as best as they can. Right on, right on. So I think that's a wrap on the questions. Thank you, Homel. If you guys have any more questions to Homel, please reach him out on outside. We're gonna have a 10 minute break. Please be quick. Don't let me go and find you outside. It's not Thank necessary. you. Thank, Thank you, you Homel. That was amazing. Thank you.